All right. Hey, girl. Hi, hey, girl. girl. What's up? Yes, I am good. It's been a great week, a very productive week. I'm super excited for so many projects I'm doing, including this one, but another yeah. super big one. I'm very excited to release next March, and then I'm going to be doing my own little independent tour of it. So I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited about it. It's been a busy week for me, too. Very busy week because, okay, this Saturday is my birthday. Yes, happy I early usually, birthday. Thank you. I usually plan my birthday, or I usually plan my vacation around my birthday. Mm -hmm. So it's been brunch week, right? Trying to get everything in and Together. sorted out for work. Yep. And trying to get all the plans in. So it's been a hectic week. But, um, you know, I'm looking forward to my vacation. So that's the good part about it. Is it going to be like a group of friends? So for, okay, so it's very planned out, right? So for the first week, at least, I know one of my friends has a major surprise for me. I don't know where we're going. Okay. But I, she's on, on my birthday. I know she's taking me out. I don't know where we're going. But right after that, I'll be going to Hilton Hotel okay. in Jamaica. That's Hilton Hotel with another friend. And then I will be... Flying out to the USA. Um, yes, Thursday. USA. We're, oh, That's right. We're, we're part, though. Mm -hmm. Florida, Miami. Okay. Yeah, That's like two hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. My, yeah. My, just two hours. My but it's my first time in flying internationally. Okay. So, yeah, you're going to yeah. have a nice jam-packed weekend. So, you have to pack mm -hmm. for every occasion. Exactly for the hotel. I'll be back from the hotel when um Tuesday. Then I'll just have Wednesday to pack for, you know, the airport come Thursday because we're leaving on Thursday. Well, so, yeah. are you guys gonna a have a car in Miami? Or are you staying only in the Miami Beach? Okay, so we are we're, we won't have a car. We plan to do Uber, but we'll be staying at an Airbnb okay. in an area called Southwest. Not really familiar with it, but my but my first time there, so yeah, an Airbnb in that area. So we'll be doing Uber. Okay, man. If you guys drove, because they're gonna try to they're gonna try to get you, because they can hear the accent, so they might try to overprice you. I was gonna tell you to right. go to this Jamaican restaurant. Yeah, she is in Pembroke Pines. It's like the outskirts, uh, suburban, outside of Miami. They are real Jamaicans. It's called Lady mm. B Islas. <laughs> Lady B. Say that again. Lady B Isles. Yes. Lady it's, B Isles. Yes, in Pembroke. And the food is good. Yes, it's in Pembroke Pines. It's like the outskirts of Miami. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, you're going to okay. know it is a Jamaican restaurant because how she has it set up, it just feels like. Jamaica. Yeah. You feel like Jamaica. But I know yes. they say there are a lot of Jamaicans in Florida. Yeah. So I may yep. feel like I'm right at home. Yeah. No, they're the like in the outskirts. You got to go up a little bit. Mm. That's why I say you, yeah. if you guys have drove, mm -hmm. you can go to Pembroke Pines. It'll take you like 30 minutes to go up north because where you're going to be at is going to be very touristy, city-like. Right. Where you, yeah, if you guys had a car, man or oh man, yeah, go to Lady yeah. B. Eyes, man or oh man. I say about Uber, I know they say it shouldn't be, I mean, a general cost I've heard is like, I know it depends on the distance, right? But the general cost I've heard is like $20. I don't know. Yeah, don't downtown, know. yeah, downtown Miami is everything is like right there. But when you go to like right. the, the county part, where it's like uh -huh. more spaced out, it's going to be a little yeah. bit costly. Okay. But yeah, the Jamaicans are in like Pembroke I'll be Pines. traveling with someone who knows. Okay. You know? I'll be yeah, so I, I guess I can rely on her exp expertise. Yes. Ask her about Lady Bee's Isles in Pembroke Pines because that fool is like amazing. 
you say so i believe it so i'm gonna ask her about yes i done had my first aki fish i have to go in the morning she's a real jamaican so what else did you have that's like Japan? the jerk chicken and rice and peas and plantains are mm -hmm. amazing. that's like that's, my, nice. that's like that's like the only dish i want rum cake i love that um, mm -hmm. I know when I did go to Jamaica for my birthday, I had I yeah. brought back some white rum, <laughs> a white rum. That stuff mm -hmm. is good. I brought back some yeah. for my father too. He's like that stuff puts me right to sleep. Yeah, it does immediately. Yeah. Usually, when I drink that, I just start to feel, I don't know what it's called, but it starts to run right down here, and I mm -hmm. just go right to sleep. <laughs> yes, right to sleep. Yes, and beef patties with cocoa bread. Like, that is like the ultimate just grab and go type of food. But yeah, the cocoa bread, I want you can't do. have, too, yeah, you cannot have too many cocoa breads. But yes, mm -hmm. those, those, those are my dish that I, that I will like die for. For okay, food. you're, you're certified. I call You're myself. Certified. You I know am what you're a, talking about. <laughs> I am a fake Jamaican African island girl, okay? Because when you I see, went when you mentioned the patty and cocoa bread. Yeah, pa yeah, cocoa bread and patty, absolutely. And I want it warm. Don't give it to me cold or fresh out the package. I want it warm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I'm a I fake feel like Jamaican. I'm talking to a Jamaican. <laughs> I'm a fake Jamaican African island girl. Cause when I had hair, they thought I was Jamaican. <laughs> and then now that I'm short, they think I'm African. And I'm like, no, I'm American. But yeah, no, mm -hmm. that food is amazing. I had a, I had a ball in Jamaica. I had a driver drive me around. <laughs> well, where did you go? He took me to the ghetto. I wanted to see everything. I didn't want to just yeah. see like the touristy spot. But yeah, yeah, I told him, I was like, I want you to take me to the ghetto. I want to see the <laughs> little market. It was like a very narrow street where there was like carts and the streets was just so crowded. Do, do you remember the parish you were in? What do you mean parish? Or the city. You remember the My city? Back. My city go back. That's where I am. Yeah, I was down there. Uh, he showed me the spot where it's like dance hall and the clubs, but it was the pandemic and you guys had a curfew. So everything shut down at mm -hmm. 8 o'clock. I had yeah. some real, uh, what did I have? It was like rice. They cooked it. It was like street food. I had like real Jamaican, the whole real Jamaican experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm yeah. glad you like it. I really am. Yes, but yeah, that's where I was at. I was there in 2021. Mm. Okay, so, last year. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Oh, yeah, that's good. So, yeah, you have mm -hmm. a nice old jam packed birthday. I am excited. Yes. The last week of my vacation, not planned, I plan to be very spontaneous for the last week and actually rest. I plan to actually rest in the last week. Yeah, you should yeah. deserve it. Mm -hmm. Yes, we see the earring. Cause okay. I'm an earring type of girl. Yes, yes. I had to come prepared, you know. Yes. So. Okay, I got my little <laughs> clip on today. Yes. Yeah. Usually, I'm a gold girl, but I love yeah. my silver. Yeah, it's nice to just throw in a little silver, just just a little bit every yeah. once in a while, but. Yes. So we're going to get right into our little cute little girls talk. Okay, girl, I'm ready. One of my peers, she is she's younger than me, of course, because I'm 34. So right. they are very hung up on social media. I, I can care less about social media, girl. Mm -hmm. But um, they were trying to be friends or try to invite people to like certain events. It just was wondering why isn't anyone coming to these events? Why isn't one, anyone having these conversations or why isn't anyone communicating? And I'm just like raising a question like, how many disposable, don't you, don't you think that these people are just disposable in your life? Like social mm -hmm. media has like programmed that you could just 
tap alike and make you think like these people are really friends when they're really not. They're just followers, like the yeah. title says. But a lot of women get kind of emotionally attached to it, especially when they're so into social media, they're so into the phone. So I'm just like, how many disposable friends yeah. do you really have in real life? Like you could go through your phone, you could call and say, hey, I'm moving. Can you help me? That's a real question. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? I honestly believe that I can. Now, to be honest with you, Makara, ever since I was younger, mm -hmm. it's generally always been me and like two other female friends. Literally, I don't know why, but ever since high school. And so I don't generally have this large circle of friends. Mm -hmm. Never. Right? I usually have one and two that are my really close friends because I believe it's so important to really keep your circle small. Yes. So I don't usually go out and try to make friends. I just allow the friendships to form naturally. Right? And so even as you mentioned the whole social media thing, I remember when I was in high school being um, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I was all in Facebook, I'm telling you. And I remember when I actually deleted my Facebook account, I felt so lonely because I'm like, where are all my friends? Or where are the people I thought really? were my friends? Mm -hmm. It's like my whole identity and, and all my friends were on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then I realized these people really weren't my friends. We we're just Facebook friends. Yeah. Followers. Which is a big difference because when I came off, no one was texting me. Really? Yeah. No. None of them. That is the point. Yeah, I don't know. I just I'm grateful that I was born in an era where you had to go outside and play mm -hmm. and socialize. And yeah. that's probably why I'm like disconnected, like whatever. I don't care if I don't talk to these people online. They don't even know me. They don't know my struggles. They don't know what I'm doing. I just show them what I want to show them and yeah. they can like it or not and keep it moving. I kind of just treat it like a billboard. Like you just advertise what you want to advertise and keep mm -hmm. it moving because that's how I'm going to be doing it moving forward. But um, I think the pandemic really helped shape, you know, who I want in my life and who I don't want in my life and yeah. kind of just defining what I want in this new friendship moving forward. So yeah, doing that and also doing that as far as what I want to do with the people that I know on social media, I don't even know what to call them. They're, they don't even deserve like the title of acquaintances because acquaintances, I actually like have some type of engagement. It may not be on a consistent basis, but it's a familiarity. You know them to some extent. And yeah, it's a, famili it's a familiarity. Yeah. You really, we really don't know the people on our social media. Oh, no. At all. No, I just It may see... not even be them. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. It could be <laughs> fake photos. We don't even know. Or it can be, you know, someone just writing for them. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh. Someone else the page. And it could just also be them posting or writing what they would want their life to be, but nothing really of what their life really is. You know what I mean? Kind of like I've, a fake yeah. reality. Yeah. I've met a lot of females and they are not who they seem like they are online versus in person. When mm -hmm. people meet me in person, like, I am alive. I can have a conversation, like a well-rounded conversation. Yeah. Um, I I'm blunt. <laughs> okay. Sorry. No, no, no problem here. Um, but when you go on my like my online presence is dead right now because I've really been like digging into myself and just like reconstructing everything, like personally and professionally. But um, yeah. people are just like, why? Why don't you post online? But I'm like are you here to talk to me or you are more interested in my online presence because obviously you're into the substance of me in person because you're not talking to the person whose online presence is popping. What's exactly. 
Like, why are you worried with what I want to do in my life? If and I'm so happy, there's this whole life now that everyone's living online mm -hmm. that we don't sometimes realize that we're actually not living at all. Yeah, no, at all. I go to like events and people are like on their phone just mm -hmm. and I'm just like girl put put the phone down like oh I gotta show my food no yeah if you get robbed or we get a stalker or something like I had a stalker I had a real life stalker this is before social media was like every day you know I'm no I've been weary about like posting where I'm at. If I post yeah. where I'm at, I've been going. Exactly. Exactly. Even for my vacation, I've barely even told anybody like where I'm going. When they ask, I'm just very tight lipped. And for social media, they won't see any photos until I'm back. Girl, you probably not for me, you you are you gonna get a picture of the ocean and happy birthday to me and I'm out. Yeah, I'm just so disconnected. Mm -hmm. Like I don't I don't, I don't care about y'all. Okay, my bills is paid. I'm happy. I'm doing what right. I want to do. And I don't have no bad energy around me. Like, I don't, I don't care. I, I feel like social media has put a lot of pressure and right. expectations, That's especially right. with friends. Mm -hmm. It's a bit much. It is. It's a lot yeah. of pressure to keep up. With, with the Joneses, with the Joneses, you know, keep up with what you're seeing rather than just living and enjoying your own life. And there are persons in our lives, as you mentioned, our friends, our family members, who mm -hmm. we neglect for the sake of posting and pleasing people online who don't even know us. When we think about it, it, it makes no sense, really. The way the way the algorithms is working right now, child, your post will go up for like a good ten seconds. If you don't get a certain amount of likes or comments, your your photo will disappear. So you really are going to be digging a bigger hole in your mind, your mental, to to keep up with the Joneses. So I'm just like, girl, I'm so far removed. I think my last post was 2021, like a year ago. Mm. <laughs> it's it's serious though. We're talking about it, but it's actually so serious because. A lot of the times, even myself, because mm -hmm. growing up, I've been a social media girl. I used to post every single day. Back when Facebook was the thing, mm -hmm. I would post every single day. People were like, every time we go on our timeline, we're seeing you. And I would post and post and post and post. And I post fairly, you know, a lot now, but not half as, as much because I'm honestly trying to live mm -hmm. like not just post the life i want to live so that people think i'm living a certain life but actually live the life be present in the moment actually right. enjoy it yeah you know so i definitely i definitely had i definitely fell vic victim of it when instagram started becoming popular i was like mm -hmm. fresh out of college and I had a job that was paying me very well. So I was posting because I was going on trips every weekend. Right. And I it just was like, where are you at now, girl? Girl, I'm in I'm in this city. Girl, I'm in that city. Girl, I'm in this city. So yeah, I, I definitely would say uh if I fell victim of that. And it definitely tore a few of quote unquote friendships that I thought I had because they were they wasn't feeling what I was posting. I was just like, wow, like it's my money. I'm posting it to the world. It's not like I'm showing you to a text message or it's degrading mm -hmm. you, but I don't know. Do you feel like social media is destroying your friends, your, your, your female friendship, like how you guys are, your dynamic? You know, I don't think so because Especially as of late, Mikara, I've been trying to be present with my friends as much as possible. For example, one of my closest friends, mm -hmm. I work with her. Oh, wow. So I see her every day, right? And she's actually the friend who's going to surprise me on my birthday. Mm -hmm. I work with her every day. So that friendship is pretty solid. And then my other close friend, 
she's you know been accompanying me to the gym because mm-hmm. I've, I've started going to the gym and she's yeah. been going before so I was like thank you girl it's a lot of um work but, yes yeah so I've been going with her so I've been going with her and um we've been spending a lot of time together and she'll be like texting me and she's like we need another girl's day out um and that's pretty often so I don't think for me social media affects me that much because I really try not to let it control my life like I used to you know and for me social media I don't really even contact people on it like that it's just to see what's going on and you know keep updated yeah some people just I don't know some people don't know how to compartmentalize I am very good at that because what you see me like right now this is yeah business me and it has like a hint of my personality but when it comes to the personal side the woman Mm -hmm. girl I'm not on social media I only have business accounts like that's that's what you want to get you want the business woman or you want the personal side of who I am you know and as as you mentioned that it got me thinking that possibly one of the reasons you know, many people and women especially take social media to heart like that and really post their lives. Mm-hmm. It can be a lack of just being in tune in their personal life and a lack of proper relationships, proper friendships right. in their, you know, real life mm-hmm. that we sometimes feel the need to create those false realities on social media. Because really and truly, if we're busy in real life with our friends, we don't have the time to be pretending online. You know, people parties is not together, or they haven't really thought about like what is what should be prioritized. And for mm-hmm. me, social media is like I said, it's just a billboard, it's just an advertising stepping stone, yeah. and that's it. I don't, yeah. I don't personally like. I don't. I really just don't care. Yeah, because I'm not gonna post my life on it. Either way, like when you go on my social media page, you won't see my mom, you won't see my dog, you won't see. <laughs> You're gonna see oh, like. I don't even want you to see the inside of my house. At work. I don't even want you to see the inside of my house. That's yeah. how private I am. You see this one area right here, mm-hmm. okay? I know I have okay. My video that is very known is how to care for bald head, and someone asks, "Can you show us how to cut?" your hair and I was like I don't let anybody in my house like you're not seeing my bathroom I don't want you seeing anything you just seeing this exactly. area and that's it I don't yeah. want you counting I don't want you counting my I don't know that's it no man but people yeah. are already Some people they show every every room in their in their house they no man the which I guess is fine for them I don't know but it's just not something I would ever do you know? I feel like it's a vulnerability that everyone is not invited or welcome into. Like, I'm very protective of my personal space and my vulnerability, like who I'm giving it up to. So yes. my home is like my safe space. And even though you guys are not here, but you guys can still see, like, it's just, I don't feel like I, I need to do that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, yeah. How is it working with your friend? <laughs> Do you want to know a joke? Do you want to know something funny? Okay. Because my friend, she would, you consider her, you know, up in the hierarchy, meaning mm-hmm. above me, my superior at work. Okay. So that's that's the crazy part, number one. Oh. Right? Because she would be closer to the boss than I am. She actually um, sees my salary. Okay, you know, and matter of fact, she is about ten years older than me, over ten oh, years, okay. over ten years, and it's it's crazy because we, despite me being so young, mm-hmm. you no, know, over ten years, ten years younger than her, we get along so well. It shocks me on so many occasions, like mm-hmm. how is the age gap, but she would always say to me that you know, you're very mature for your age. Mm-hmm. You're very mature. And so I think because of that, 
we're able to get along. She's able to have certain conversations with me and there's no awkward moment or immaturity that's right. really coming coming in, in, in the way, you know? So working with her, I mean, I work at a radio station here in Jamaica, Mellow FM, and our show runs from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. As soon as 10 a.m. comes, I am in her office. Mm-hmm. That is my daily routine. That's like where I go to unwind. I'm like, ah, take the headphones off. I'm mm-hmm. out of there. Let me go. Let me go to her office. And I go and I sit down and she's she's busy at work. because She's the mm-hmm. administrator, right? She's busy at work. And I'm just sitting there on my phone. And we talk sometimes and then I'm back on and we're just in each other's space. And she'll share a joke with me. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just like that. Just candid. Okay. Well, that's yeah. cool that you guys can <laughs> you guys can be you guys can work with each other and still be able to be friends outside. Do you guys bring your yeah. work do you guys uh you guys bring like your work conversation out? Like when you're going out, do you talk about work when you're out or no? We try not to unless it's something funny that happened. Okay. You know, unless we're laughing about something. But when it's when we're out, it's just um, you know, personal. Just you stuff are, that we're yeah. about. So that's good that yeah. you guys can separate and yeah, not because, be I mean, family. basically she basically she gives me orders at work. <laughs> yeah. And I don't I don't feel any way about it because she's my friend. You know, there are some persons, for example, who may say, Well, you're my friend, you should cut me some slack. No. Yeah. I think just understanding that's her role and this is my role. It just makes the friendship flow easier than for me to want special treatment because, right? You know what I'm yeah, there's. I know I had a situation where I was trying to work with a friend, and she mm-hmm. was a little bit more emotional, and I had to put her aside. Like, listen, I'm I'm not trying to be mean, but you know there are you know expectations. There are, you know, things that need to be in order. And I know we're friends, but sweetheart, I have a business to run and this is slowing me down. So I just know a lot. Some females kind of get attached with the emotion and just feel like the emo- because we're friends, mm-hmm. you get the special treatment. And sweetheart, no, I did not work my tail off to and give you a special treatment. So that's cool exactly. that you guys can be friends. I know I'm like very, very detail oriented. It's it can be annoying. Mm. Um How so? I <laughs> I rather keep it separate. If I find someone that can know how to separate, you know, but for the most part, I'm I'm a big See, you, you prefer to keep your business relationship separate from your friendships. Absolutely. And most times I would be like that too. Because I get exactly where you're coming from. But I also feel like just having the right understanding. I mean, you know, just not trying to feel like you are more important than you yeah, are. Yeah, no, 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 no. I've never you know? felt like that. Yeah, no. You know? And even for me, not because there are times when I'm in her office, my friend at work, and she'll ask me to step outside because she's going to go on a call. Yeah. Or someone will come in and she asks me to leave. And I would never feel, you know, insecure or offended. Right. Where at work, she's doing her job. I think it just comes from a place of respect, too, respecting her role. Right. But I had to learn that, you know, people's upbringing, their background, their insecurities, like, I have no control over it. And Mm -hmm. I can only vocalize, you know, what I need, you know, everything in black and white, nothing can be in the gray. And if they feel how they feel, then, I mean, you have to do what you have to do. So for the most part, I like to keep it, you know, business and personal. If I find someone, I mean, I'm open to it and we're going to have to sit down and have a conversation. But for the most part, I like to keep it separate because how I am as a businesswoman I'm I'm detail oriented and it's it can be intense. Mind you, I don't. Yeah, I don't micromanage or belittle you. It's just mm-hmm. I'm just very detail oriented and mm-hmm. how I work, like my habits and stuff. It's it's a little yeah. 
it's a little hard for someone to catch on if you, especially if you're not in the in, um, in the industry of fashion. So it could be like overwhelming. Right. So right. that that is probably where they get a little fl uh, flustered. Mm -hmm. But when it's like personal time, girl, let, girl, where the party at? Yeah, I, I get the vibe. Like you know, you know how to switch. Or you know how to you know show the different sides of you. Absolutely. Right? Mind you, though, I would, if I were to have my own business, I wouldn't do one with a friend. You know, like entrepreneurship. No, that's not something. I would never do that. Like I will yeah. work and be friends with you at um, you know, a corporate entity or a nine to five. But I'm not gonna start a business and say, hey, let's start this business together. No. I'm oh sorry. no 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 yeah no i no. no um it's just some <laughs> friends i brought on on board to do like certain projects and they would just slow my business down i'm like <laughs> girl yep you know my line of work is like a domino effect so you know i've never joined a business it's just you know trying to help a friend because they were down and they need help but you know i no, for the most part, I like to keep it separate. We could be acquaintances and have friendly conversations. I know how to like departmentalize that, but yeah, my friends, I'm gonna keep that as that because I know how I operate as a businesswoman, and yeah. I'm a bit. I know I am an A type woman. I can be assertive. I'm mm. not afraid to talk. <laughs> mm. But you know, that's actually a good quality because. Um, so many people are afraid to just speak. I, I've heard it so many times. They they tell me that, wow, you're so forthright. Mm -hmm. You're so direct. I'm like, but that's the best way to be. That way there are no blurred lines. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Why would I want there to be blurred lines that causes confusion when I'm direct? Whatever needs to be nipped in the bud, no. We can nip it in the bud and move on. I just feel like that's the best way to communicate. Uh, it, it sounds easy, but I have like these little huddle meetings with my employees and they're, mm -hmm. they're all women. So they're all women of different races, backgrounds, etc. And we have like these discussions like that, you know, some of them don't have the like the sit down of like how to go about it. So they don't feel confident enough talking about, I mean, we're not talking about, but just, you know, bringing up the suggestion or saying even no. So I just, I, yeah, it, it's just, yeah, I don't know. I so, you know, for some of us, that's something we have to practice. Right. So, know. but sometimes they don't know where to start when it comes to practicing. Mm, they don't know when the right time to, to draw the line. Correct. And for me, I just say if something doesn't feel right in my gut, because I have that gut feeling like, oh, mm -hmm. girl, some don't feel right. We got to go. And that gut instinct of mine is not. It's not usually right. Right. So I'm like, I can't really describe what your gut feeling. Because one person will say they feel like they have butterflies in their stomach. I just feel like I have a heavy cloud. Like, I don't know. It just feels crazy. Like, we got to go. Everyone's intuition just feels different. I cannot call it out. But it's just an intuition. And you need to know, like, you got to say, no, I don't feel comfortable doing this. Like, there's just so many ways. I know I gave them a sheet that said um, 50 ways to say no. And, yeah. and, it, and it gave them, like, all the ways of saying no. And they were just like, I didn't know, like, these are all the way. These are all the different things to say no. Like, this is, I've never been taught this. So, mm. yeah, there's just a lot of women that don't practice that or don't know how to go about it um and then just there's just some women who just don't want to speak up they don't want to cause the conflict there's mm. like a lot of different mm. things, but i'm just like girl bye you're not gonna complicate my life you can why are why are we so similar because just today i was speaking with my co-host on the show mm -hmm. and i was saying it's simple for me because it's either it's right or it's wrong Mm -hmm. And if something is right, then you do it. If it's wrong, you don't do it. And if what you're doing is wrong, I'm going to call it out. Right. You know? And it's, it's just black and white to me. So if I, I if it feels wrong, I'm going to say no. And right. because I know it's wrong, 
I won't allow you to make me feel bad because it's wrong, <laughs> you know? So there's this, um, I think it's called reverse psychology that people will try to use on you mm -hmm. when, when you tell them no or when you feel uncomfortable, like you cannot use that on me because you're wrong. And so I think not having the right understanding of right versus wrong mm -hmm. and what can really lead us into just knowing what we'll put up with and what we won't. And also just knowing what you, you want, not what someone mm -hmm. else is wanting. That's definitely yeah. something that I had to like go through in my 20s because I was just going with the flow. Like, oh yeah, girl, you want to do that? Let's go. Let's, let's do that. And I'm, yeah. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm like, girl, I'm, I'm trying, I want to go like this. Yeah. Knowing what I want instead of just going with the flow or whatever they say was like my biggest sound for i would definitely have to mm -hmm. say with my female friendships in my 20s and once i started saying no am i doing that things started to get a little more clear but yeah there's just some women who just don't want to cause any conflict they just go with the flow these are their their responses i'm only basing it off of um my employees but i mean there probably right. are some other women who are like that but i know for me girl you, you are not interrupting my life Mm -hmm. So no, <laughs> because you know I always say like I don't want to be fifty years old and look back and have a bunch of regrets. Yeah, so I want to make sure that I am avoiding that so that when I am fifty, I can look back and say, well, I made mistakes here and there, but overall, I'm proud. You know, there was like an old person that I was seeing because uh, I did like volunteer work and I know one man, I wish I can remember what she said. It was something about regrets. Mm. I forget the freaking saying that she said, but she was just like, you make sure you do everything you need to do before you leave this earth. I don't care if it's stupid. I don't care if it's fun. Try any and everything. At least you can say that you did it and you, oh, it, because you won't be saying what if. That was yeah. her What if, what if, what if, don't regret. Just do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Live your life, basically. Get in tune with what living your life actually means. Yes, I definitely have lived my life. Yes, <laughs> and I'm getting, I feel like this year, I'm actually getting ready to live mine. Finally, the big 25, and I'm ready for it. Woo! Yep. It's a milestone. Man, 25. <laughs> I was right in Miami too. I was right off of Biscayne mm -hmm. Boulevard. Okay. I had a party yeah. bus. I had a ball. Yeah, I was right in Miami for my 25th. Mm -hmm. oh, it's it's I crazy. threw up. I was a mess. They fed, yeah. me, they fed me a whole bottle of Patron. I threw up. They mm -hmm. paid for the cab. I was a mess in a riot. Mm hmm. But you had fun. But you had fun. Yes. I know they was like, girl, I had to call out of work because I am so messed up. Yep. I had a ball. Okay. I had a ball. I started on a Wednesday and ended on a Monday. That was my 25th. Man, that was <laughs> great. And then on a Monday. Yeah, because it was still, because down there, they have strip clubs that are actually like clubs. So you mm -hmm. still, they still had a party. And I had a friend who was a DJ. He gave oh. me a free. <laughs> you got a free. I had a free, I had a free little VIP section. And I'm like, girls, girl, I had girls and guys. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I had girls and guys, so we was all up in there. Y'all yeah, know one friend, one male friend, and one female friend. They hooked up. That's how lit. That's how much my party was just like off the chain, girl. Bye. So much so that you you remember the details of it. No, I have pictures, and they had video. Yes, girl. Oh. Yes. But, um, listen, I'm telling you, you have a ball. <laughs> And I'm okay. going to tell you about it when I, I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about my experience when I get back. Yes. And you make sure you drink. And then, because after a certain age, your body's going to be like, girl, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't drink the way you could drink before. Yeah. When I get older. Yes. Oh. Your body's gonna be like, oh, reco- recovery. <laughs> Three days. Because right now, I I'm surprised because I can drink pretty well, and people are like, oh my god, we're so stunned. So yeah. Oh. But yeah, watch, I, watch. I, I can, it's I can gonna, hold my own. Watch, it's gonna be, it's, it's gonna, you're gonna be like recovery. I need about two days to recover, and it's gonna increase. I need about three days to recover. Watch. Yeah. yeah. Man, the days of being twenty five. <laughs> I just feel like, I just feel like it's a freedom year. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm so much wiser, Mikara so much wiser in every aspect of life and Mm. one of the the most valuable you know things i have learned so far is the part about having fun yes because i'm gonna have a lot of fun and so that 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 fun spirit has been awakened Mm -hmm. and it actually has a lot to do with my friends because They're the ones I'm going out with. They're the ones I'm having this fun with. Mm-hmm. You met mm-hmm. your 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 nice set of friends, and they're all in different age ranges, right? Yes. So the one I'm going to the gym with, she's just one year older. Okay. And so then you got older friends. Actually, yeah, they're all they're all older than me. That was me too. I had all I had all older friends. I, I think my male friends I don't were know why, but they're all they they're all older. So yeah, you definitely gonna have some fun because they're gonna be like, girl, come on, let's go. Yeah. And yeah. you're gonna be like, all right, I went yes. But yeah, 25 is like the year where you've been out on your own and you've done ex you done explored your emotions you, and you, you found your clique your friend your friend group and now it's like all right i'm i'm finding this rhythm yeah i'm i'm set i'm 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 good i'm good with me like, I'm really too, you're not afraid to live yes you oh, kind of been I'm through like- some stuff where you where, where you've learned and as you say you worked out your emotions a bit and now you're like what the hell I'm gonna live my life. You know what? Mm-hmm. No regrets. I'm just gonna just gonna live and enjoy my life. Yes, please do that. Cause at after a certain point, <laughs> they're gonna be mm-hmm. like, "Girl, you an adult. Pull it together. Pull it together." I know. And you gonna. I think when I'm much older, I'm not, I'm not even gonna want to leave the house. <laughs> Yeah, I got Maybe. away with so much in my twenties just because I said oh, I'm twenty. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll let you slide. You, you, still got some le- you, you, you have some learning to do, but yeah. as soon as I crept to that twenty seven, twenty eight, they're like, "Girl, you need to pull it together." But I'm gonna let mm-hmm. you slide until you're thirty. I'm I'm gonna still like give you eyes like you need to grow up, like you need to start maturing. But yeah. yes, enjoy anyone listening to this. Please enjoy your twenties. That don't mean go yep. go kill someone or go <laughs> do something in danger. But yes, enjoy you. Enjoy yes, you. Enjoy try you. try any and everything to your liking because when you get close to your thirties, ma'am, you really gotta. No one's gonna be looking after you. You no know one's be definitely buckle, gonna be buckle down time. <laughs> yeah, you you're an adult adult. Yeah. Ah, oh, to be yeah, and a, an adult times two. <laughs> oh my god! I was just like they kept saying like, "Oh, your bones are gonna be hurting," or when you get out of bed. Yeah, I heard all that stuff when I turned like <laughs> twenty eight, twenty seven. Those birthdays that they like. True. Yeah, when you go to like these little restaurants, oh, how old are you turning? And then they kind of like scare you with that. And I'm just like, I'm 30, but I don't feel it. But as soon as you crap up them 30s, I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to do some yoga, stretch mm-hmm. my bones. <laughs> but yeah, they're going to, they're going to, they're gonna definitely going to try to scare you, some people. So be aware mm-hmm. of that as well. But you're 25, enjoy your 25. You got a nice little jam pack weekend. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you. Yes. And how is your fitness journey? Girl, all right. 
Now, <laughs> how that came about. So I'll, I'll give you the exclusive. So I'm actually planning to enter mm -hmm. Universe next year. Oh, wow. Yep. I want to enter Miss Universe, of course, Jamaica, and then the larger one. So, you know, I got to get shape and all that, you know? And so that's where it really, even though I've been needing to do, go to the gym for years, that's where it really, you know, kickstarted from. Mm -hmm. And then my friend, the one that's one year older than me, she was going to the gym for a while back and I was like, okay, let me come with you. But so far, it has been good. For the first day of the car, I was out of it within just like maybe 10 minutes. Oh my God. So I fell to the floor. She took, a, she took a photo of me and I was like, <laughs> out. Just, just done. Just done. My entire water bottle was finished. I oh was my done. God. Yeah, what were you like, doing? Like aerobics? Were you doing weightlifting? I was doing much. I was just unfit. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't even doing that. I'm, like, I'm like, this is so crazy. But then after going back, it's been maybe over two weeks now. Mm -hmm. It's it's gotten much easier. Okay, much easier. as it should. I can, I can last a bit. I can last. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Working out is not as easy as everyone. Yeah. Exactly. Is. You going to the gym? I am. I am an athletic child. I've ran yeah. track all of my childhood. Like, so me being disciplined, like it's ingrained in you. In oh, me. I need some of that. So when I we when I went to Jamaica, they like track star, track star, because my legs <laughs> are still toned from yeah. running track. All of so do you life. still go to the gym like regularly? Yes, girl. Like how many times a week? I go five days a week. Yeah, I do. yeah, I work. Yeah, <laughs> I go five days. I mm. I wait. I do weightlifting. I do high intense training. So my my workout is a bit intense for a beginner. <laughs> you know, and I'm so ashamed of myself because guess no, guess you what? shouldn't be. When I was in the ninth grade, believe it or not, my aunt and my cousin and I, we used to exercise. Mm -hmm. Mind you, that was a long time ago, but I was maybe like 15, but I was actually starting to get abs because we used to do, I don't know if you know, P90X and- I've seen the advertisement. I've seen the advertisement. Yeah. And we used to do this one called Insanity. Mm -hmm. So we did that. So I was really into it. I don't remember why we stopped. But to compare myself now to then, I'm like, no, girl, you need to get back into it. So when you say you go five five days a week, listen, that's impressive for a beginner. You know, yeah, it's it's a that's what I said. It's not easy. I know mm -hmm. working out is like the new thing, and everybody wants to help be healthy, but it's like a rhythm. You gotta you gotta get into it. I know I do it first thing in the morning when I wake up. I brush my teeth. I drink my mm -hmm. lemon and hot water. And then I work out. Like I work out first thing in the morning when nothing is in my stomach. I feel like I get the better results. And then I want to that. I want to. I've been saying I'm gonna do it, but okay. So my job starts at six, and it's I all early. these all these years I'm still not used to getting up so early. Mm -hmm. And so I'm rolling out of the bed like a barrel every. <laughs> every morning and i'm like when will it end and I was, i'm like i'm gonna exercise most times i'm rushing to get ready so i generally exercise after work so yeah i want so to get into it yeah i'm so distracted in the in the afternoon or i'm like in the middle of creating sometimes working out at nighttime is like a no-go so i made sure to arrange that i work out first thing in the morning and have nothing on my stomach except for water of course and hot yeah hot water and tea but yeah i yeah i work out intense <laughs> <laughs> and then when i had a personal trainer before the pandemic he used to try to kill me i might even want to say what he used to experiment with me because you're going to be like what the hell no oh. tell me like give me an example <laughs> Um, so if it's an outside type of day, he will have me run up the stairs and back and, and down. 
with weights on on my arm, on my wrist, and my um and my ankles. Another time he had those um, monster wheels, and I would like push it up. And then another one is I jump inside the monster wheel and I jump out. And another one is you jump onto the monster wheel, lunge, and then top the yeah. Wheels. yeah, like the big monster, like you know those monster trucks. Yeah. Those wheels. Oh. Those things are heavy, girl. So that sounds like <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, my listen, workout is just the other day. I pulled I pulled my leg and I wasn't even doing anything. So I yeah. definitely need a lot more practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I have years of experience exercise. Mm. I've been running since I was like five years old in recreational track and field. And then I went into AAU, which is like I traveled and competed. So I have years of mm -hmm. experience. experience. So don't, yeah. don't base it. They used to tell us to run in the water, like the pool. Yeah, like I have okay. extensive. You are a pro. Yeah, like I have You're extensive exercising regimen instilled in me. So you, ha you have a lot of endurance. Yeah. Yes. Mm hmm yeah but i will say though that since you know even though it's just been a few weeks i feel the difference because mm -hmm. i don't know how much you've maybe switched up your eating um habits but for me i used to eat a lot of rice a lot of dumplings rice and peas yeah a lot of it like every week i i used to eat a lot of dumplings and mm -hmm. bread yeah. And, you know, I've come to understand they have a lot of like, carbs and Light all that. Mm -hmm. And those are the stuff I love. But I've cut them out completely. And I'll tell you, I feel lighter. I yeah. feel more energetic. I feel more energetic. I feel like I can actually get stuff done without feeling so tired all the time. Yeah, those white carbs, I forgot they explained it, but how it like breaks down, it's a mm -hmm. slow process and that's why you feel so sluggish yeah. and the way you sleep is like, it's mm -hmm. different compared to, um, mm -hmm. don't have it. so yeah, I've definitely changed the way I eat because mm -hmm. dairy products is a no-go for me. Um, but I do oh. moderate, yeah, no dairy for me, but I do moderate, as I said, cocoa bread, sometimes I got to moderate. Um, I, yeah, I have my little cheat moments. If I go to, if I'm going to Jamaica, I know I'm going to be having some real Jamaican food, but mm. I just know when, on a regular basis, like, you yeah, know, we can, we can, we cannot go back to that girl. We gotta, we gotta See, pull it together. Dairy is a no for you. It's a no for me too. Like, I guess I'm lactose intolerant, but anytime I drink milk or eat cheese, my throat is just out of it mm -hmm. just clogged up so i have to do non non-dairy yeah 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 no dairy i gotta ask people what they put in a food if they don't remember i'm not eating it because i child my stomach be like rock hard and it be, mm -hmm. it's just slow pro yeah i'm not i'm not doing all that so yeah, I've changed that way. It's been like six years now since I changed the way I eat. I don't, yeah, normally I don't eat meat, but I will eat chicken, like I said, if I travel, if I go to like another country. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know what I've cut out too? Soda. Yeah. I don't know. One day I just said, I'm going to stop drinking soda. And I just stopped. Like, I've had it since, but it's very unlikely. Maybe if there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. but it's more so been water and juice no yeah. soda i drink a lot of water i drink almost like a gallon of water every day because i'm up early anyway mm -hmm. um i drink okay yeah i drink like every other week it's not like belligerently like i'm drunk but i have a nice little buzz <laughs> Okay, I met I met some some strange lady uh, last week, and we was having a nice little cute little. Talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I don't even have juice in my fridge. I have almond milk, and I make my own oat milk. But um, yeah, I don't even have juice in my refrigerator unless I have company over. I ask yeah. them like what they want to have to drink because all I have is water and milk. Um, yeah, almond milk, but you know I don't even have juice because i don't want to get tempted because that's sugar i yes. know i have a sweet tooth so 
water water and tea is all i drink that's all in my refrigerator and my almond milk so. mm. very inspiring <laughs> the gallon of water listen so i don't drink enough water which is bad but no there are the gym the gym is making me drink more yes mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm happy for that at least yeah, it's definitely a rhythm you have to find on your own. You just got to try different stuff and see what works for you. Yeah. But, ooh, child, the gym, good luck. I'm, I'm, I'm going to need it. How is it having, like, a workout partner? Because I do not like workout partners. That is not my thing. I, I've seen the benefit and the, and, um, the disadvantage. I remember, you know, working out with my aunt and my cousin. Mm -hmm. um, that was good because they were hard at it. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have partners who are just, you know, disciplined and they they have a goal, mm -hmm. I think that that works in your in your benefit. My friend now she has a goal, but our goals are different. Right. She wants to build muscle. Mm -hmm. I want to tone down. Yeah, so you guys are so, have different workouts. I mean, for now, it's just the beginning. So we we generally do the same thing. But I've said to her that maybe some point soon, we're just going to have to go together, but do you know, Separate different things. Separate in different yeah. areas. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not too crazy about <laughs> workout partners. I don't know what it is. I feel like it's a slowdown for me. Mm. I, but I do I'm, think, Makara, that at your level, mm -hmm. it would be because you already, you know what you're doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm having an understanding. Like you don't really need a partner. Yeah, and I also, don't need a partner I just to make you determined. Yes. And I'm also. Yeah, and I'm also just, I kind of just build, like, my own momentum in my mind. Like, I'm able to be self-motivated versus someone else. They want to talk. And I'm like, girl, I'm about to prepare for this race, okay? I I'm going to say it right now. And if she's going to watch this, hey, girl, I love you. But the other day, we're at the gym. <laughs> and I'm working out, and she was on the phone. And I'm like, hello. So I'm just like, you know. You you do you over there, but I'm I'm working out. So I'm yeah. not gonna allow that to stop me because at the end of the day, number one, I pay my money, so I'm not gonna waste it. <laughs> and two, I have a goal. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, you do what you're doing, but I've got stuff to do over here. Yeah, I don't know. I be in my little zone, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm like, I I just rather be by myself. Or go with my person. Yeah. My personal trainer is like my partner sometimes, but he not really training. But yeah, I don't know. Having a workout partner may not work for me, but mm -hmm. it work but for you. Once you, you once you get into the momentum and mm -hmm. actually know exactly the areas you're targeting, I don't think you necessarily need a partner. But I think yeah. why a lot of persons do get partners is in the initial stages because they need the motivation. Yeah. Or the company. Oh, because God. guess what? Since I've started going to the gym, all of a sudden, everyone at work is like, oh, I need to go see if my gym membership is still there. Uh, look at, look like, at the trendsetter. To, to, to go to the gym. Right. <laughs> so it's just uh, the motivation, really. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. Good luck with this uh, universe. Yeah. Thank how you. Long is that, how long is that process going to be? I have no idea because I know the one for this year is still not wrapped. Okay. So more than likely, I won't hear, you know, about that until next year. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting my mind prepared. So that's why I'm going to the gym. Uh, the other day, I was looking through potential questions online that they generally ask contestants. Right. And I was like, kind of rehearsing and, you know, but I think with Miss Universe, it's, it's just going to be mainly about confidence, you know? Yes. It's just your confidence. Even if I'm talking rubbish, I'm going to speak it confidently. Yeah. I don't know. But, and also just, just to be versed, I think because of my job as well, 
Mm -hmm. um, being in media, it, it helps, right? Yeah. Being in front of people, knowing what to say, knowing how to phrase things, mm -hmm. right? I think that will be um, a major benefit too, okay. you know? So I'm looking forward to it. Is there like a pageant or a Miss Universe like coach? Miss Universe coach. I think when you join um, Miss Universe Jamaica, I think more than likely there is. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone will be there to coach you. I think so. I think, yeah, each pageant maybe has a coach. Oh, that's interesting. This yeah. is interesting. Hmm. I'm going to look out for you, girl. Yes. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I mean, for the longest while, people have been saying, "Why don't you join a pageant and that?" And it's never been my thing. Mm -hmm. Just never been my thing. They've always say they they'd always say, "Why don't you go model?" Wasn't necessarily my thing growing up, mm -hmm. but I, what I like about it is, you know, being able to actually have some impact. Yeah. That's more so my my perspective. Not necessarily to just walk on the runway and say, look at me, but to actually use it as a way to have impact. Yeah. It's definitely a more intentional way of having an impact versus a model. A model is you're you're literally a walking hanger. Cause I am in the fashion industry where I style models and you are a prop. The, yeah. the, the the focus is on the clothes and you just heighten it so people can visualize but as far as someone being like a miss universe or mm -hmm. um, anything else like you're actually having like an impact so yeah. it's a lot more meaningful yes well we got a nice little eavesdropper are you ready to listen i'm ready All right. Hey, girls. Hi. Hello. All right. How many disposable relationships are you currently in and why is that? So I just got married recently. So Congrats. Really, thank you. It really kind of makes you think about like friendships and, 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 you know, who's close enough that you'd want to be there on like one of the most important days of your life. So um, for me, I would say when it came down to like how many friends I felt close enough to invite to my wedding they're probably about like 10 to 15 yeah. right and they're significant others too sure right um and then you know but beyond that right when I'm thinking about like my close friends on Instagram mm -hmm. or like back when Finsta used to exist right uh there'd probably be like 30 or 40 people that I considered, you know, close enough to fill in on the, like, slightly more intimate details of my life, but right. not close enough to, you know, go out of my way to grab a beer with. Right. Almost. Girls night out, right. happy hour. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What about you? Um, yeah, that's a good question, because, um, yeah, I tried to keep, yeah, my circle close as well, so, like, yeah, I got married a year ago, so same. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, but social media wise, the close friends made me think of yeah, like Instagram, like close friends, you know, like they're like, you know, co-workers or like things that you like, you know, some people you kind of talk to. Um, so, yeah, I would agree with like the 10 to 15 range is on there that, you know, you're close with, but not yet sharing super personal with. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank All right. Okay. okay. If you guys want to be eavesdropper, you can definitely call in. You can leave a voicemail. I will not be there. Neither will Brianna. But <laughs> you can leave your thoughts on how many disposable friends you have. You can call the number 202-480-9557. Make sure you say the question because, you know, we're going to be having a lot of different discussions. But we want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear your life experience. If you go through the same thing. And maybe you can be included in our episodes. But that was a cute little eavesdropper. She pretty much definitely said what we said about the disposable friends. Mm -hmm. and both of the women that I was speaking with, they were both married. And one of them talked about how she had to just narrow down what friends will be attending. And that, mm -hmm. that's not I'm like, ooh, I know you had to, I know you probably had some, yeah. friends, some angry friends, but I'm not there yet, so. Oh, that that's a hard one. 
what <laughs> friends will be attending. But I think, I, I think for that though, people just have to be understanding because there may be different reasons mm-hmm. as to you know why you'll have to narrow down. And naturally, you'll want the closest persons for your special day. Right. You That's know, right. and there are some persons yeah. who think they're closer than they really are. Mm-hmm. That's just that's just the fact, right? And so I it, it's all for me in the wording. Yeah. The wording and the explanation. <laughs> the explanation. But at the end of the day, it's up to them to just be understanding. Right. You know? <sighs> I can't control their emotions or, you know, whatever they go. It's a tough through. one, but. Yeah. I, crazy enough, I don't want no wedding. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I don't, yeah, I don't want a wedding. I want a lavish honeymoon. But a wedding, I'm I'm just not into it. Why? Um, I just want to keep it simple. I'm in the business of always impressing people because I'm an image consultant, a stylist. So I always got to keep up. I always, I'm always dressed for something. Like it's just a constant revolving of people. And I just feel like my love life is Mm -hmm. like so personal and only us should be sharing a union and i don't feel like anyone else needs to witness that um as far as like my honeymoon like i want to travel to like different uh places and like um have like my own little have our like our own ceremony of different people cultures and then have like a cute little kickback showing like Mm -hmm. where we've been to our honeymoon but yeah i'm not really into the whole idea of a wedding and showboating for folks and you're pretty much putting yourself into debt and then expect and to have a house. Food. <laughs> yeah, I, food but yeah. Eat. yeah, I you really, know? I don't want a wedding. I don't, I don't feel like I need to have that ceremony for people to witness my love because they're not going to be there when I'm struggling or when my husband struggles or X, Y, and Z or right, we're probably right, going right. to the people like two, two months or two years down the line. I'm just not interested in that. And then it comes the the money reality and all the other stuff. But yeah, I I am not really interested in having a wedding. I do want to have a lavish honeymoon because honeymoon. I'm very yeah I'm very big on traveling. I've been traveling. Yeah, again, I did AAU track and field, so I travel like every like every four months. Mm-hmm. So traveling is very big to me. I I just love to learn. I love to experience different cultures and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what I want to do. But yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not interested in having a wedding, to be truthfully honest. And that that's totally fine. And they're gonna be like, "Why, Mikara? We want." And sometimes they make it all about them. They want to come and be a part and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's what you feel most comfortable with. You know, to kind of do something that you don't mm-hmm. feel comfortable with. It's 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 clear that you'd be doing it for other people. Yeah. If we hit you know? like the twenty year mark, where we're, where we're like we more like married for like twenty years, then you know I have like a little ceremony. But like for my for our yeah. first like shebang, like I don't feel mm-hmm. like it's I don't know I don't feel like it's necessary. I've actually read the history of having a wedding, and I mean I I don't feel like those ide- do those ideologies even apply to today as modern right. society. Wow. everything else um yeah but no i i truly don't want to wait but yeah when she was talking about it i was like oh this is like an episode in itself mm-hmm. narrowing mm-hmm. narrowing down your guest list and how were your friends reacting afterwards mm. i'm not there yet but that right there is like something i would just let someone just go because <laughs> i want to hear because People don't talk about it. I don't I don't really see too much of people talking about it. Like No. Most people just invite everyone. <laughs> Absolutely not. You're not digging me. Please dead. everyone. Yeah, you know? you're not, I'm not digging myself. In. I just got myself out of debt not even five years ago. You think mm. I'm gonna put myself in debt again? You got to be someone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um 
you know but yeah that is something i would definitely would love to just hear the ins and out of like how they narrowed down their list and why they narrowed it down to that and what were like the consequences of like the relationship afterward Ooh, I, I feel like sometimes women especially can be so petty yes they can i don't know how well that would work to narrow down really mm. I know. I know one of my mom's friends, she yeah. stopped being friends with my mom. My mom has 12 brothers and sisters. So her bridesmaids are already set. They're her sisters. There's there's yeah. no outsiders. Her best friend got like bad at her and they had stopped talking. And I was just like, that's crazy. So that's why I'm just like, stuff is not like talked about, but like it's common because my mother will, she is, yeah, she was just like, she stopped talking to me. She told one of my aunts, which is her sister, that she's not friends with her because she didn't invite me to the, she didn't make me a part of the wedding. Mm. So she just stopped talking. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> she has only her sisters as her bridesmaid, which is six. And that's how many sisters she has. Yeah, which is understandable. But yes, sometimes like I it's just understanding because if she has six sisters, I mean, yeah, as a best friend, fine, you'd want to be a part. But then, family, she's gonna want her family to be mm -hmm. a part of it, you know. So for me, if it's family that you have as your bridesmaids, I'd be like, okay, you know. Yeah, I I would feel a certain type of way though if it was some other friends right. who weren't best friends but I, I could definitely see with the family yes I'm I just like see. I can't control people's emotions and how what they got going on but that's def yeah that's def that's definitely a story more common than mm -hmm. usual yeah, it is yeah well I'll get there well I'm not gonna get there because I'm not gonna have no wedding are you trying to have a wedding now listen I'm gonna tell you this so I have done the whole shebang already with oh you've been wedding. married been been this there and back <laughs> been there and back and that's that's been wrapped you know but for my wedding it was just people close to us mm -hmm. which is what i was happy about so there was no one to to you know have any bad feelings because mm -hmm. our circles were rather small Mm. So everyone who needed to be there was there. So no okay. one, no one felt left out. You know, about okay. four people. Okay, that's a nice. Yeah, that's a nice. That's a nice little gathering. That's how many I would have at the little after party of the honeymoon. Yeah. But, yeah. Some people be having like a hundred, two hundred, and I'm just like, girl, who? What? What is going on? Mm -hmm. It just, it's it's all about inviting who you're actually close to. Most times they invite people they don't really know. Ask them their middle name right now, they can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, I've gone to weddings and people have crashed the, crashed the wedding and I'm like, girl, who are you? They, don't, they don't look like they belong here. Like, who are, who is mm -hmm. that? <laughs> so, girl, I don't know, yeah. just let them in. I'm just like, girl, you know you paying for that, but you know what? I'm not watching your pockets, so never mm -hmm. mind. I'm just my Listen, you gotta pay per head with the food. That's how we did it. You gotta pay per head. And so I remember we were like, no children, no kids, because that's oh, no, no me, okay. no, no ma'am. Yeah, no. So and we're like, just you, no plus one. Yeah. No plus one. I've been yeah. to parties where I've been to weddings where it's like your plus one has to be your husband or you're engaged. No boyfriends. Right. No boyfriends. Yeah, they have. I no wonder how they took that one. That that's why I was just like that whole little wedding planning a wedding. Like I I would love to have like a little panel about that because ciao. Oh, that would be interesting. Yes, I was a part. Yeah, I was a part of the wedding, but yeah, she had on her flyer, "Your plus one must be husband or your fiance, no boyfriends." Oh, I wonder. Yeah. So, I wonder how many friends like had that was an ugly. 
it behind was, okay. the scenes. Because that's what I'm getting at. That must have been, you know, rough. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. It was ugly. I can assume that I can assume that most of them probably weren't married or engaged, but definitely had boyfriends. Yeah, they, I've been with him for like five years, girl. He like my friend. She's like, no, like y'all not like. like he's a my friend, no. Where's where's the ring? That's what she wants to know. <laughs> where's the legal? But where's the paperwork? So she was just like, exactly. I was just like, girl, let me mind my business. I'm in the party, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got nothing you don't to, have have anything to worry about there. No, man. Because you're already in. What time to fit in so I can come, okay? I don't know <laughs> nothing about it. <laughs> No, man. You're, you're, not, you're just watching the drama, but you're not a part of the drama. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm no out. No better way to be. Yeah, I'm out. You want me to bring some wine? I'm out. Mm-hmm. Ciao. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, what did you learn today from our talk? What do you want to cheers to? And what I would want to cheers to is learning, you know, more and more to have fun and enjoy me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm learning that more and more, especially even just talking to you. Because, mm-hmm. of course, you're older. Why are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's definitely what I tend to. Oh, it cut out. It cut out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So repeat it. Repeat it. Okay. So yeah, I learned from you know our 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 chat, and what I want to give a cheers is learning more and more to just enjoy me Mm -hmm. and have fun. You know, you mentioned your your time being twenty five, and that's exactly how I feel now going into my 25th birthday. Like, I just want to have fun, Mm -hmm. right? Like, not watch anyone. And I'm glad that everyone around me has, you know, my best interest. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as I said, my circle is really small. If it's not my two close female friends, it's literally family. Mm -hmm. And you know what that forces me to do too? And that's what I'm even learning from you is to learn to and be okay with relying on myself. Yes. Right? Be there for me. You know, sometimes we're always looking for people to be there for us. Like Mm -hmm. everyone else in the world, why aren't you there for me? Where are my friends? But being there for yourself, Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. that that's the most valuable, valuable lesson. And, And having fun, actually living life. Yeah, on social media. <laughs> oh, child. yeah, yeah. What did I learn? Well, I learned that I'm I'm talking to Miss Universe soon That's today. Right. That's okay, right. I don't even know. But um, I learned that it doesn't matter what age, young, young, or my age or older. That you know, everyone's not into social media. Like I, I think I am, cause child. When I walk outside, people just in a phone, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, "Can you look up and walk?" But yeah. um, yeah, I learned that everyone doesn't matter what phase or what age you are. You're not all into social media, of course. Mm-hmm. And also, um, yeah, everyone is just still learning, learning to explore their womanhood, mm-hmm. and just finding their own rhythm. Yeah, that that's the word rhythm. I like that word. Yes, it matches it perfectly because we all yes. really do have our own rhythm. Oh God, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Cheers to that. Woo! Cheers to that. Yep. You make sure you enjoy your birthday. I'm gonna listen. I planned it out. This birthday has been planned for months. Months. I remember because you know I want to. I I I'm like. I want to make sure I enjoy it. Please you know? do. So. Please do. Because as you get older and other women priorities get arranged and mm-hmm. other stuff gets important, you are definitely going to be your own self until you find your significant other. Right. Z. Yeah. So it's important to, to actually enjoy being in my own company. Yeah. yeah, being in your own company and definitely enjoy your female friends while yeah. it's still definitely. there. 
But yes, I hope y'all enjoyed a hey girl, my version of a digital girls' night out. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure y'all leave a voicemail. We want to hear your experience. The number is 202 480 We're going to have a nice little another episode and y'all enjoy. Bye, yes. girls.